today I'll be designing some new characters for one of my favourite manga series, One Piece. But there's a catch. I won't get to decide what kind of characters to draw. Instead, I'll let my friend the Mighty Wheel decide. As you can see, it has every single devil fruit in existence on it. That's well over 100. Whichever fruit it picks, I'll design a character to match it. Oh, and I'll also spin this other wheel to pick what fractional race the character will be for that extra little bit of spice. So let's get started and find out what our first victim, uh, I mean character, will be. Alright, our first character will be a fishman who ate the rumble rumble fruit, which means they have the ability to create, control and become lightning at will. In the actual manga, this fruit was eaten by NL, who was the main antagonist of the Skypiea arc. I love lightning themed powers, so if I could pick a devil fruit for myself, this is the one I'd choose. Oh man, this is going to be super interesting. So let's get designing. Since the Rumble Rumble Fruit is probably one of, if not the most overpowered devil fruit in the series, I knew I had to come up with a tough looking character to go with it. I felt that a villainous fishman would be a great fit. In my research, I noticed that most of the fishmen antagonists were based on sharks. So I decided to stick with that theme and base my character on a mean looking tiger shark. In general, most of Oda's fishmen designs have a sort of beachy vibe with open shirts and shorts, but I decided to throw in a bit of a punk element on top of that. There's just something about electric and punk aesthetics that makes them go so well together. I gave him a lot of jagged and spiky features to give that feeling of built up static electricity. You know, like when your hair stands on end before lightning strikes in a thunderstorm. I tried to make his hair and fur collar reflect that feeling, so I made them sort of stand and spike upwards. For the punk elements, I gave him some spiked wristbands and a denim vest with the sleeves ripped off, so there's lots of scrappy material around the armholes. Then, for the typical fishman beachy vibes, I gave him a shark tooth necklace along with a tattered pair of shorts held up by some rope around his waist. I finished off his design with some open toed sandals, although they do look a little more like something you'd find in Naruto. I just thought they looked cool and worked with the rest of his outfit. For his colour palette, I went with a muted neutral skin tone to help those tiger stripes pop a little more. I used a lot of vibrant yellows for his hair and clothing to carry that electrical feel and then made his jacket a dark blue to help break up those yellow tones. I used a black for his shoes and accessories to keep some of the punk elements. Overall, I wanted to make sure his colour scheme worked with lightning effects and wouldn't clash with it. So I made sure to stick with colours that work well with vibrant neon blue. The vibe I get from this guy kind of reminds me of one of my OCs. They're both villains, but instead of being the typical loud and outwardly violent type, they're a lot more quiet and disciplined. They don't need a boisterous persona to intimidate people. Their mannerisms and overall energy can do it for them. They know they look tough, so they don't feel the need to show off their strength. I don't see a fishman following in the same footsteps as Arlong or Hody Jones though. I don't think he would have the opinion that fishmen are superior or anything like that. I think he'd be more like an anti-government kind of character. Like the revolutionaries, but evil. He doesn't want freedom for the world. He wants it all for himself. But rather than go about it in an openly aggressive way where he forcefully takes over territories, instead he does it in a more subtle way, similar to how Doflamingo took over Dressrosa. Maybe he'd be the ringleader of a powerful underground organisation, a group that's part of the black market, putting weapons and illegal items into the wrong hands for profit, using his contacts to build unrest in various places and then showing up to capitalise on it so he can claim the land for himself. Anyone who tries him would quickly realise their mistake when they find out how powerful he really is. But I like that his almost basic design would trick people into thinking he was just a regular guy. I don't know, I just really like that concept for him. And here's the finished design. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's pick our next character. Spin the wheel! So next, we have a pirate who ate the boom boom fruit. This means they have the ability to explode any part of their body at will. In the manga, it was eaten by Mr. Five, who was part of Baroque Works, but is now a fireman at the new Spider's Cafe. Maybe this time we could try designing the character who had the boom boom fruit before him. I wonder what kind of character that would be. Let's find out. So for this design, I wanted to make Oda proud by making a sexy pirate lady. I mean, who doesn't like sexy pirate ladies? I used Clip Studio Paint's 3D models to help with the pose a little, and also used this box model for her to stand on. I was inspired a little by the rogue character design in Wakfu. They have this sort of mask that covers the upper half of the face. Since our pirate has the powers of the boom boom fruit, I had this sort of saboteur kind of vibe for her. I also felt that she would be the captain of her own crew, so I gave her a fancy pirate hat with a cruise logo on it. For her clothing, I actually struggled quite a bit to come up with a design I liked. 
especially for a jacket. In the end, I went with a corset and a plain short dress with a leather jacket on top. I didn't want to add in any buttons, so I went with these little clip things that go all down the front and also added these big cuffs on the wrists. The leather jacket looks like a long coat, but it's actually in two parts. The upper half is a short waist length jacket, while the lower half is just a long piece that comes out from under the corset. It's probably a little uncomfortable to wear, but aesthetic. Sometimes we have to suffer to look good. I gave her some fancy high heeled pirate boots coupled with some long stripy thigh high socks to complement the rest of her outfit. I also decided to give her really long wavy hair. Since the boom boom fruit allows the user to explode any part of their body at will, I thought it would be fun if she could detonate her hair as well, since it's technically part of her body. So I gave her a belt with some bombs on it with parts of her hair sticking out to look like fuses. I can imagine her throwing them at people and detonating them. I also added a big hair fuse on top of her hat as well, just for fun. So with her design complete, it was time to work on the colour palette. I decided to go with lots of red and warm browns to help enhance that fiery explosive feeling. I wanted her to look fun, but have an air of danger about her. I used a different shade of brown for her corset so it didn't clash with the belt and used a nice warm gold for all the accessories and accents. I made her dress white, along with the stripes on her socks and parts of her jacket, to help break up that sea of red and make her overall form more interesting to look at. You don't want to use too much of the same colour, otherwise everything just blends together into one big single blob. I decided to make her a fiery redhead to go with her explosive nature, but then gave her blue eyes as a nice contrast to all the warm colours. They stand out really nicely. The idea I had for this character was that she's not massively powerful, but has managed to carve out a little area for herself, maybe somewhere in South or West Blue or something. In the grand scheme of things, she's on the level of a small time nuisance. Think something along the lines of the small side characters that Luffy ran into in some of the earlier parts of his adventure, but sometimes side characters can be fun and interesting. They help with world building and make a fantasy setting feel more alive. I feel like she'd definitely be a lot more loud and boisterous compared to our fishman though. She has explosive powers, so I think that her personality would definitely have the same energy. She'd be this force of chaos, showing up to cause as much trouble and destruction as possible, before robbing everyone blind and running off before the marine showed up. Her and her crew could hold their own against most of the regular forces in the area, but would have no chance if someone more powerful went after them. Like if a decently ranked member of the navy or like a, a bigger pirate of some kind showed up. I think she'd find herself in some sticky situations from time to time. So here's our explosive new pirate. She's so cool, I love her so much already. All right, it's time for our final character design. What will it be? Let's spin the wheel. This is going to be super fun! We have a member of the Mink Tribe from Zoe who ate the Venom Venom fruit. This gives our character the ability to produce and control different types of poison, while also being completely immune to poison as well. This devil fruit was actually eaten by Magellan in the manga, who was the main antagonist of the Impel Down arc, which I really enjoyed. I wonder what kind of Mink character would use such a fruit? Let's see, shall we? So, I have a confession to make. I'm only at the Dressrosa arc, so I don't know anything about Zoe and the Mink Tribe yet. Although I did spoil myself a little bit when doing research for this character, but the minks seem pretty cool, so I don't mind. Since the minks are based on real life mammals, I thought it would be interesting to see if there are any venomous mammals for our character. And it turns out there's a few. I decided to go with the Northern Short-Tailed Shrew because it's so fluffy and adorable. Pairing something cute with an ability that could be quite sinister could be a fun concept to explore. I didn't want to make our mink a bad guy though especially since I already made a villain with our fishman from earlier, so I decided on making him a bit of a mad scientist instead. He has a round, stocky build to make him look extra fluffy, and I added some whiskers along with a big open smile. I gave him a pair of massive goggles, taking inspiration from some of Oda's other scientist characters. I copied the style of them, but exaggerated the size a little. There was also this screw that I put on one side for a little asymmetry, but I got rid of it later as I just didn't like it. I added a long coat to give that laboratory feeling, but it's more alchemist than science lab since I can imagine him taking a more alchemical approach to his poison experiments. To add to the alchemist look, I gave him a waistcoat and a plain pair of trousers underneath that coat. It feels a little like something from Victorian times, so maybe this could be another character who had the devil fruit in the past, before Magellan got his hands on it. 
To complete this look, I gave him some big rubber gloves and a pair of boots to match. Although I did struggle with the boot design a little, I didn't want them to be just plain, but at the same time it was hard to find an interesting design for them. I'm pretty bad when it comes to drawing feet and footwear, so I just went with a design that I was familiar with in the end. I'm not really sure if they suit the character though. Now that I had the design finished, I moved on to figuring out his colour palette. I wanted to go with a lot of neutral tones to help make that gooey poison stand out. Also, shoes usually tend to have brown fur, so I wanted to make it kinda accurate despite it being very, uh, not realistic. I used gold for the metallic accents like the rim of his goggles, the chain on his coat, and all of the buttons on his outfit. His lab coat is a nice muted teal, and then I originally had his gloves and boots to be a bright cyan-y colour, but after a while I didn't really like it. I felt that they just blended in too much with that lab coat, so I eventually changed them to be white to make them stand out more. His suit underneath that coat is just a nice plain black, with the trousers being a slightly lighter shade for some interesting variety. And I made the poison oozing from his hands a stereotypical purple. Since most of the time when you see poison in anime, it's either purple or green. In this case, green would have blended in with his outfit too much, so purple was the better choice here. Besides, purple's the best colour for everything! As I mentioned, this character is a bit of a mad scientist. He's someone who started out with good intentions, a scientist who came across this interesting devil fruit and decided to use its powers to help others. He could replicate the most common poisons like snake bites or dangerous berries and then use his knowledge to develop antidotes to them. But then as time went on, he started to experiment more with his poisons, limit testing them and seeing how far he could take them or what he could do with them. And over time, it developed into the invention of more harmful or dangerous things. Maybe some of his discoveries started to send him insane. Or maybe he stopped caring about the greater good and became obsessed with chasing that one big discovery that could change the world. Even if that discovery happened to be really bad if it ended up in the wrong hands. Maybe that's why Magellan now has the Venom Venom fruit. And here's the finished design. I actually have two versions of this guy, but I wasn't happy with the first one. I think the newer version is definitely much better. He has a lot more character to him. I also love that big fluffy face of his. So there we have it our three new One Piece characters. A fishman who ate the electrifying rumble rumble fruit, an explosive pirate who ate the boom boom fruit, and a poisonous mink who ate the venom venom fruit. I'm really happy with how they turned out and had a lot of fun creating them. Which one was your favourite? Remember, these are just my interpretations. If you have some different ideas, then I'd love to see them. You can share them in my Discord or tag me on social media. All of my links are in the description. But that's it for now. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye!